Every once in a while, I like to do something weird. What do you get when you cross a tuning fork with a coil of wire? Sonic electricity? Well, let's give it a try. Here I've hooked up our coil to a meter, which is set to AC. We'll whack the tuning fork. I don't know if you can hear that. And we'll bring it near the coil. And yeah. There's some residual voltage, but oops. The closer I get it, the more current. The trick is I gotta keep from hitting the coil. Now some of you are probably rightfully thinking that hey you could do the same thing with a speaker because it's a coil of wire and uh, if I get it to move up and down inside that magnetic field that's inside the speaker it'll produce electricity so it's not going to be much different than this coil of wire here let me set that out of the way uh, so let's try that we'll start the tuning fork and we'll bring it near the speaker We nope the magnet keeps grabbing it. Ah, no. See, I'm just not getting much. If I do this, create a uh, big movement in the speaker cone, move that uh, coil inside the magnet a lot, I get some electricity out of it. But uh, so why isn't the so why isn't the tuning fork doing the same thing? Why does it work better with a coil over here than it does the speaker? Well, my best guess is when I use the tuning fork near the speaker, the tuning fork converts the motion of the tuning fork into air waves. Uh, the air waves, pressure waves, strike the speaker cone, move the speaker cone up and down. The coil wire that's on the speaker moves around a magnet and then that's going to produce all the electricity that's going to happen out of this system. Um, so I've got this coupling between the tuning fork and the air, the air and the speaker cone, and then the speaker cone moving up and down. Then there's the mass of the speaker cone, which, you know, resists movement. So um, there's just a lot of friction in the system and a lot of inefficiencies. Uh, with the coil over here, I don't have that. The tuning fork is the magnet, and it's moving, uh, it's creating a, a magnetic field, changing magnetic field near the coil and that produces electricity directly. So that's my guess as to why this uh, coil works so much better than the, uh, than the uh, speaker. So I think it's kind of interesting that you can take vibrations from something like this convert it into electricity. Uh, does it have any uses? Well, uh, I don't know. I guess you could use it to, for example, to detect the movement of a building structure, of a bridge, um, the coil uh, near the structure, as the structure vibrated, what have you, would produce electricity. You could monitor that. Would it produce an appreciable amount of electricity? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, it was a, would it be a usable amount of electricity? I don't know. Uh, might be. Depends on the size of the structure, the coils, and so forth. Um, and otherwise, uh, you might be able to use the coil to actually extract energy from a vibrating system to, you know, lessen the vibration. So maybe in an automobile or something you could uh, actually have a system that would uh, dampen vibrations out of, out of uh, certain things but uh, that's uh, the best that's the best I can think of it was just something weird to try and I uh, got something out of it so I thought I'd share that okay I well, hope you found this useful and interesting in your home electronics experimentation